that and respond, that would be fantastic. I just want to make sure we give everybody credit for whoever is here. All right, so we're already at uh, two, about to be three minutes after Carl, and I want to respect everybody's time. I mean, and Helica's on lunch. I, I don't want to yeah. monopolize too much of her time, and I'm sure, I'm, I'm sure some of you, the other ones, uh, again, this was a very short notice thing. I realize you just found out about this within the past 24 to 48 hours, so um, it's awesome. Um, it just truly shows how excited you are about the program, that you made time um, today to actually be here um, and just let us welcome you a little bit into our Brookline family. Um, oh, I, I do see um, the persons I identified. Okay, awesome. Thank you for messaging me. Um, and my, um, Myra has joined us also. Fantastic. Good. We got a good group. Okay, okay, sorry. Anyways, um, but again, uh, we will still have your formal orientation. That is a requirement for all students. That's going to be uh, the Friday before. Um, the 21st, um, and that's at 12.30. Um, your reps will go over that with you. It'll be a similar format like this, except there'll be a lot more people on it, um, including a lot of the resources that you have today. But this is just, this is really just a welcome call. Um, just a quick, brief, you know, welcome and introduction, and we're, we're happy. Some of you have been enrolled for months. These are, this is one of those programs that only starts certain times of the year, so we're absolutely, you know, just excited that the time is finally almost here for you to get started on this exciting new career and, again, be a, be a, a bigger part of our family here as we continue to grow um, our program, um, which is launching just fantastic as it's a newer program here just within the past year. So um, I know Jessica's got a meeting that she um, she has, so I want to give her the floor first, and then we'll we'll have Carl take over after that. Anissa, welcome. Um, go ahead, Jess. I just wanted to say hi. Yes, I do have another meeting, but I wanted to come and say hi to you, new students, and um, welcome you to an exciting program. We do have uh, lots going on in this program. It's very hands-on, especially when we get to STMs and uh, we try to make it as exciting as possible. So welcome. Great, and she's not kidding about exciting. When you're walking down the hallway and you see people dissecting hearts, and I have to quickly oh, turn her away so I, I don't fall <laughs> to the floor, uh, that's Jessica's classroom. <laughs> so we've done sharks already and we've done cow hearts. So. Very, very exciting. Next adventure. Okay, cool. Well, again, I appreciate your time, Jess. And uh, Mr. Carl, Carl is our Career Service Director. Um, there are few people in this world that you will ever meet that are as inspiring or as exciting to talk to. Um, and, it, and the thing about it that really makes the most impact for most people is it's 100% genuine. None of it is made up. It's a true care and passion for helping our students throughout their time here. But where he really gets the joy is he's the one who puts you in a job at the end. So um, he actually gets to see you transition to, you know, being at work and working and enjoying that job and, and just, you know, dealing with you when, when really all that excitement is just coming together. And um, so uh, just a, a fantastic person to, um, to have in your uh, group of resources here at Brookline. So without further ado, Hopefully I built you up enough there, Mr. Carl, because it's all true. Uh, go ahead and take it away, Mr. Wolf. Well, thank you. Thank you for that. Um, wow, what can I say? Um, it is an honor for me to uh, meet you and, you know, talk to you guys. Um, Angelica, how much time you got for lunch? I don't want to take, you know, are you going to eat some food or something? No, I'm here. So whatever, I am at your disposal with time. So whatever, however long this goes. Oh my goodness. Wow. Well, again, you give me some time here because you no, know, um, my head's got to go down so I can walk through the door. <laughs> goodness. All right. Anyways, so search tech. Angelica, why, why do you want to do search tech? It's something that I've been interested in for a while now, and I decided to kind of just take the plunge and do it. Right now is a good time in my life that I just kind of, it just kind of worked out, so I'm hoping that it'll just continue to work out. 
Nice, very nice. Hey, I'm I'm very interactive. This is not a you know um, Carl talking to y'all and that one. So you can take yourself off a of mute and ask questions or whatnot. Okay, just putting it out there. Um, so uh, Vicky, let me pick on Vicky here for a second. Vicky, why why search tech? I know Vicky's on mute. Yeah. So oh, there we go. She there figured. I am. Yep. Um, why I search tech? When I was 16 years old, I was going to go into the military to be a surge tech. It was guaranteed enlistment. 30 days before, they no longer guaranteed it. So I didn't go in. And now, many years later, I'm back. Nice. Nice. You know, there's a saying about nothing happens by chance, right? Amen. Nothing, absolutely nothing. I don't care what it is, who says what, absolutely nothing happens by chance. We may not know why, there's always a why. We may never know why, but there's always a why. So it is a good time, you're here now, and here's the opportunity again. If it's meant to be, it's meant to be. Here we are, and you are hearing it. So welcome to you. Thank you. Um, a little bit about myself. Needless to say, this fellow uh, wasn't born in the U.S. And with that, I open up my mouth. The first question is, where are you from? I, uh, my response is, planet Earth. So um, I, was, I, was, I was born in a little um, African country named Ghana. Uh, born and raised, been here in the U.S. for a number of years. And, um, you know, varied experience. But today is not about me. Today's about you guys, and I want to talk to you guys about uh, Search Tech because Search Tech is such a phenomenal program and a phenomenal opportunity for each of you to realize um, the goals that you, 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 you have for yourselves and for your family. For whatever reason, whatever your reason is for doing this, this is your time. One of the things that excites me about uh, what we do and what you guys are doing is the fact that it is clear to me that even in this environment that we have of COVID-19, you realize that life still continues and there's still opportunity and you're jumping out at it and taking it by the horns, right? They say take the bull by the horns. You guys are taking it by the horns and making it work for you because Frankly, this too shall pass, right? COVID-19 shall pass. Whether it suddenly disappears, like some people say, or whether we have a vaccine or whatnot, the point I'm trying to get across is life has not stopped. Life still continues. And so I personally applaud you guys for, you know, hanging on and doing what you can to achieve whatever goals you have for yourselves and to make things happen for you. This is not my first go around with search techs. Yeah, I've worked with search techs in the educational um, environment prior, and I've worked with search techs in um, the staffing environment. I, I, I did um, staffing, uh, national staffing, travel staffing, both travel and local staffing uh, for a couple of years, and I worked with just about any professional you can think about in the healthcare field, from CNAs to physicians, and everything in between, right? So uh, talking to you guys, I'm talking out of my personal experience. It's not something that I am yanking out of somewhere or making it up. This is, this is my personal experience. And I want to tell you guys that there aren't enough search texts out there. Let me rephrase that. There aren't enough good, solid search texts out there. When I was doing staffing, I couldn't find enough search texts. I had hospitals calling from across the country. Hey, I need an emailing. We need search texts. Can't you find search texts? 
where are these people at? Right? When I was in the educational field for search techs, every single search tech that I worked with, other than one, were all hired before their extension program was over. Let me say that again. Every single search tech, except one, they were all hired. They all had offers. Of course, they can't accept. They can They can verbally accept, but they cannot do anything written until they have completed those clinical hours. And I think you guys have what? I think it's like five hundred and some, maybe six hundred. Am I right? Breadth of education. So, what I want you guys to know is that this path that you've chosen to go on is phenomenal. Your level of excitement and your level of commitment is going to determine whether you succeed or if you don't succeed. This is showtime, people. This is showtime. I remember not too long ago, um, right before we started a search tech program here at this campus, I mentioned to some of my contacts in the hospitals here that we're uh, starting search tech, the program. The level of excitement was like I took my kids to the candy store. That's how excited these, these, these people were at the hospitals here. They can't wait to have you guys come in and come do your clinical rotations. Remember that your clinical rotation, this is something I don't want you to ever forget. Your clinical rotations are your interviews. Okay, can you guys hear me? Your clinical rotations are your interviews. How you show up, your attitude, your mindset, the way you present yourself. These are all things that they are looking for. These folks know me from my other educational, um, when I worked with search tech. So their mind is, Carl's gonna bring us folks just like his past you know, search techs that he gave us. And I'm telling you, those other students, I have not stopped talking about them. Some of them are first assists right now. They were on point. I mean, they were on point. It was game face on from day one, and they went with it. For each of you out there, I'm not sitting here telling you that it's a bed of roses. That would be a lie. Because we all know that roses have thorns, right? Even roses have thorns. So it's not a bed of roses. You're going to have some challenges. But again, how do you show up to those challenges? Are you going to rise up to the occasion? Or are you just going to sit back and say, mm, I, you know, this is, this is rough and this and whatnot? One of the things I want you guys to know is you need to start seeing yourself right now as a search tech. Okay? Don't see yourself as a search tech when your clinical rotations are over. See yourself as a search tech right now, right now. That's what should be implanted in your head. That should be your vision of yourself. That should be the mission that you have every day and what you work towards. Because when they're going get stuff, and believe me, it will, that's what's gonna get you through. Because it will be so firmly planted in your mind. You can see what you, what you are going to be, that nothing is going to shake that foundation. Are you hearing me? I can't hear you. I still can't yes. hear you. Yes, Thank sir, you. I hear you. Yes, Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Look, folks, I'm looking at your, you know, a number of you are not 18 years old, right? We heard from uh, Vicky. Vicky said when she was 16, and she said several years later, Right, Vicky, I applaud you. I applaud you because 
it makes me proud that you don't let age define who you are. Age is just a number, people. Age is just a number. In all things, there is opportunity. You either go get it or it goes right by you. I'll say that again. In all things, there is opportunity. You either go get it or it goes right by you. Right? There's a saying that, you know, um, many people miss out on opportunity because it is dressed in overalls and it looks like work. Oh, absolutely. Opportunity is work. Unless you win the lottery, then, hey, you know, right? You didn't have to work hard for it. You just went and you bought a $2 ticket and you won, you know, a million dollars. You set. How many people get to do that? Not a whole lot. The rest of us have to work for it, right? So, something else that I want you guys to know is that your program director that you saw, Jess, she all smiles, yeah? She's like, hey, welcome to the program, this and that. Jess is a perfectionist. Jess wants the best. And she wants the best, not for herself, but she wants the best for each of you. She wants you to be the best you can be. So she's going to drive you. I'm not talking driving Miss Daisy now. She's going to drive you. She's going to hold your feet to the fire. Okay? She's going to smile with you. She's going to laugh with you. She's there to answer your questions. She's there to sit with you and figure out how you overcome stuff. The focus is to make you successful. I need you guys to have that mindset and that attitude and that drive because when it's on, it is on. You cannot be successful if you don't want it. The question I ask each of you is how much do you want it? And Helica, you say you've always wanted this stuff. I'm in a hundred percent. Okay. Yes. Every day. Every day is a hundred percent. And folks, remember that Jess, um, director of, uh, of admissions, your admissions representative, myself, campus president, our director of education, none of us have a magic ball to wake up one day and say, hey, Vicky has this issue, let's go figure out. Or JLo has this issue today, let's go help her. We don't know this stuff. You have to be able to speak up. Right? You have to be able to speak up and say, hey, I need help with this. Or this is happening outside of school. Because, folks, life happens outside of school. Right? So when stuff is happening outside that is going to detract you or threatening to detract you, speak up. Because we may just have those resources that you can leverage to help you on that so you're still successful in school. Okay, here's something else I, I tell all the other students that I'm gonna tell you guys too. Tucson, Arizona does not equate to United States of America. Let me repeat that. Tucson, Arizona does not equate to United States of America. What do I mean? What I mean is there is opportunity all over the United States of America. Tucson isn't the only place where you can be a search tech. So many opportunities anyway, all over the place. And the cool thing about search tech for you guys is this. At the end of your program, you are sitting for a national certification. It is part and parcel of your program. And once you have that certification, the entire country is open to you. Go anywhere, spread your wings, fly. Let me show you guys something. Director of, of, of admissions, can I share my, my screen? Yeah, go ahead, just click the green share button. Okay. 
Let's see what happens. Um, I, I realized when you asked me a question earlier and I responded, I was completely on mute, so you didn't hear anything that I was saying, so I apologize about that. <laughs> That's okay. That is okay. Let me see uh, where is this stuff that I, I want to share with you guys. Um, while you're while you're looking that up, I just wanted to kind of um, add on to what you were saying. Um, when when Carl was saying, um, see yourself as a surge tech now, not not waiting until you're at the end of your program to see yourself as a surge tech. Um, in general, this is something I um, talk to um, you know my team in admissions um, and and have talked to other people about is. Um, in general, when you want something like this, like, again, say the surgical tech uh, career, um, what you really need to do is, is what Carl is saying is, you know, see yourself as that now. And when you're seeing yourself as a surge tech now, what you have to ask yourself is, what does somebody who's a surge tech do? What type of decisions does somebody who's a surge tech make? Right? What activities do they, how do they start their day? Do you think a surge tech keeps hitting the snooze button all morning? Most surgeries start about five in the morning, don't they? Five, six in the morning, right? Do you yeah. think they have the luxury of hitting that snooze button again, again? No. So, but if you can start being that surge tech now, right? You can get in that mindset, in that preparation of showing up every day in your life now of who you want to be, who you are, right? A surge tech. That's just one small example, but I'm just saying throughout the course of the day, do you think a surge tech could be late for a surgery? Heck no. Oh my gosh, no, right? These are life and death type of things and sometimes with some of these surgeries, right? They don't have the luxury of just strolling in with their latte and, oh, I got to scrub up. I'll be there in a few minutes and everybody's around the table, right? So think about that in your day-to-day how are you showing up day to day? Are you showing up like a surge tech would? Are you keeping your commitments? Are you being on time? Or are you getting up early? You know, those types of things. So if you start doing that to, for yourself now, not only are you going to be successful in school, by the time you get to the surge tech piece and you're graduating, you're ready to rock. And, and, and anybody on those clinical sites that you're going to is going to see that. And they're going to recognize it right away. Wow, this person brought their game. This person's ready for this. They understand how serious this is of a career, right? So start thinking about that now of, of who do you have to be? What kind of changes do you have to make personally? What kind of decisions do you make on a daily basis so that you can show up as the surge tech that you're ultimately going to be expected to be? Perfect. Yep. Perfect. Did you find that document? There we go. I did. Can you guys see my screen? Yes. Okay, good. So this is, this is like three or four pages, but I just want to share something with you guys, right? Surgical tech is a phenomenal career area. This is information from the Bureau of Labor Statistics, okay? The Fed, the Fed website. Their most current information they have is May 2019. I took some of those things off just to show you guys a few things. Hey, Carl. Okay. Yes. In the bottom right-hand corner of, your, of that window, can you zoom in a little bit more? So, Because I know some of these people are on cell phone. Now, granted, I have bad eyes. So, of course, I'm looking at a computer and can barely see this because I don't have my glasses on. But for those on the cell phone, they might see it. If you could just, yeah, just zoom in a little bit, that would be better. Awesome. Thank you so much. Yep, you got it. Thanks for that. Folks, I need you to take a look at this. This is 2019 medium pay. Okay, for search text. At the end of showing you guys this, I'll tell you why I'm showing this to you right now. Okay, $23.22 per hour. Okay, it's median. That means that it's the middle of the road. There's high and there's low. This is middle of the road. Okay, what I want you guys to look at is where it says job outlook 2019. To 2029, 7% faster than average. That is the growth, that is the need for surgical techs. Right? Part of the reason I'm showing you this is because I want you to start having that mindset of getting there. 
and being a part of this. This is a 10 year span. And it's only going to get bigger. 7,600 surg surgical techs. That's the need. Okay. You guys know what surgical technologies do already. But take a look at this. On this particular one, what I really want you to look at is the last one, it says job outlook. It says employment of surgical technologies is projected to grow 7% from 2019 to 2029, faster than the average for all occupations. Advances in medical technology have made surgery safer and more operations are being done to treat a variety of illnesses and injuries. Okay? There is more than enough opportunity for you. And if you are that good, if you are that good, you are going to write yourself a ticket that you haven't even imagined just yet. Let's keep going. I went in and I pulled information from that Bureau of Labor and Statistics across the country, the US, to show you guys something. The top paying states, when I talk about Tucson is not the United States of America, this is part of what I mean. When you look at the top paying states for surgical tax, Alaska, Nevada, California, District of Columbia, Minnesota, can you guys see that? If you can, just nod. Okay, make it a little bit closer. I want to take you across, look at the hourly mean wage. Look at that. How many of you on the phone are making that right now? That hourly wage. How would this impact your life? Imagine that you are doing this. This is what I mean by see yourself as a search tech. Get right into that mindset, right? Tucson, Arizona is not uh, the United States. A few years ago when I was working with surgical techs, right out of the gate, as soon as they were certified, they were earning 25, 26, 27 dollars an hour here in Tucson, okay? That's a few years ago right out of the gate because they demonstrated their abilities and their knowledge and their work ethic through their clinical rotations. Let's keep going. This says top paying metropolitan areas for surgical techs. And this is information you guys can look up yourself too. This is not something I made up. It, it's all online for you guys to see for you. Go, go look up for yourselves. Okay, look at all these areas and look at how much money that surgical techs are making. You gotta be paid for your passion and I'm showing you that you can. And these are non-metropolitan areas also. And look at that. I mean, California, $36.81 an hour. Come on. I even want to go be a search tech too. I can make that. But I don't like blood. Okay. Here is something for Arizona. I pulled Arizona specifically just to show you guys. The median hourly wage, again, the median means that there's higher and there's lower. I told you guys that a few years ago, some of these students that I worked with were making 25, 26, 27 dollars an hour right out of the gate. There it is right there for you guys to see. The annual mean wage is $51,730. How many days a week are you gonna work? 
How many days a week does the search step work? Tell me. You guys know? Three, four days, yes. And I'll tell you something else. If you are that good, you are going to not only be paid, but you get to be assigned to a doctor, a surgeon. The surgeon will pick you. And you work only when that surgeon works. Do you guys do you guys hear me? You will work only when that surgeon works. And you will be paid back because you are that good. Don't think that your surgical tech, oh, you're just a technician. You're not just a technician. You got to know your stuff because you are the one who's going to be handing the, the, the equipment, the right equipment to the surgeon when they ask for it. And you better not hand them a wrong equipment. So you got to know your stuff. I am working with some of um, the that I know for years. One of them is currently a nurse practitioner. And I want them to come and talk to you guys so you can hear from them directly. You know, and there aren't enough search techs even in this town. So some of those search techs, let me tell you what they did. They formed a search tech organization company and they contracted themselves to all the hospitals here in Tucson. So they work at TMC, they work at Northwest, they work at St. Mary's, and they were that good. So when the surgeons didn't have folks, they called them, they contracted with them. When I talk about opportunity, I'm talking serious stuff. And you will, I promise you, you will hear from these people directly. There is no better um, way for you guys to truly get what I'm saying than to hear from these search techs yourself. These, those who are first assists and who have moved on to other things. These are precious, precious folks that are going to tell you what you need to do, how you need to do it, what mindset you, you need to have, and be able to you know, get this done for you. Now, I'm gonna, what questions do you have on this stuff? I'm going to stop sharing now. Uh oh, you're on mute. Any of you have any questions? Sorry, I did it again. I just started talking and I realized I'm on mute. Any questions on any of that? OK, no questions from Janaea. Thank you for speaking up, Janaea. I can see a lot of uh, the people without the video on are probably shaking their head no, but we can't see you say no, that you don't have questions. <laughs> yeah. Let me, let me also, let me go a little, a little um, let me veer a little bit off topic and say this. For those of you who are not on camera for whatever reason, remember that in this virtual environment in which we are, now this is a career service thing I'm telling you about. In this virtual environment in which we are, when you have a presentation and you are not on video, that speaks volumes, okay? Remember that when you have guest speakers, these are people who are in the field right now, who are going to be people that you network with. You want them to see you and you want to see them. I know that you guys can see me, but it is more important for them to see you, to know who you are. Does that make sense? Do not cost yourself an opportunity because you have someone presenting to you and you are behind you know, um, a black screen. That's not gonna help you, okay? Little, little things in this virtual environment cost you a lot. So that's one of the things. Learn to practice to show yourself and be confident in who you are. Make sure that your background is you know, okay. And just be there and interact. Make that connection. It helps. All right. Now, um, folks, I can't say enough about what an amazing program you guys are getting into. But I'm telling you, 
it is not an easy program. I'm not saying it to scare you. I'm saying it to prepare you. You have got to have a different mindset and a different attitude. I'm sure you you know nurses, right? I worked with nurses for years. I still do because of what I do here. An ICU nurse is different from a regular nurse. Is different from a hospice nurse. Is different from a psych nurse. Okay. You can't take an ICU nurse and put her in a regular uh, nurse position. The nurse is going to quit or somebody's going to die. Okay? Because ICU nurses are programmed for what? One, two, three patients max. They're done. Your regular nurse has a whole ward, maybe 10 patients. Your psych nurse has a whole lot more. And the patients are a whole different kind of different patients. Why am I saying that? I'm saying that because you can't just get up and get into search tech and expect to be successful. You have got to have a certain kind of mindset and a certain type of attitude in addition to the passion that you have for it. It's a whole lot different. Director of admissions was talking about how surgery started at 5 a.m. And if it starts at 5 a.m., you can't show up at 5 a.m. You got to be there at 4.30, sometimes even 4 o'clock, because you have to make sure that the place is prepped, that the equipment that the um, sterile processors did is really sterile. You got to make sure that the patient has been prepped before the surgeon comes in there. So there's a lot that goes into being a search tech. And folks, if you don't know a search tech, we need to find you a search tech. Okay, you need to really understand what a search tech does, what goes into their daily chores, and be ready for it because there's a lot than just, you know, just uh, handing the surgeon equipment and that's it. A lot of preparation before, a lot of preparation after the, the, um, the surgery is done. It's all on you. And folks, no pain, no gain. The folks in the search tech program right now, ahead of you, they will tell you that Carl said the same thing to us. And those of them who are brave enough to tell you, will tell you that they come to my office when I'm here and they say, wow, you told us. Because it really is a no pain, no gain, program and just gonna drive you she's gonna ride you because she wants the best for you no joke absolutely no joke i can't stress this enough gotta be game on every day and your passion that's great that's amazing because it is going to help you through but you need more than passion. And what you need is a mindset and the attitude. Okay? Don't be ashamed, you know, if there's somebody who's younger in the classroom or there's somebody who's older in the classroom. Wanna, hey, education is not a race. You're not going to school for somebody else. You're going to school for you. So forget what anybody else is saying and just focus on you. Because whatever you're putting in is exactly what you're going to get out of it. It is for you. It's not for me. Certainly isn't for director of admissions. It certainly isn't for your admissions representative. And it certainly isn't for Jessica either. And here is the cool thing about Jessica and the fact that you guys have her as a program director. Jessica continues to do what she does. 18 years in this market, in this environment. She's got a ton of connections. They know her, these hospitals and whatnot. So put yourselves in a position where Jess is going to say, oh my, you're going to love Angelica. Or oh my, Vicky is the bomb. Or oh my, Javier, goodness gracious, 
You guys hearing me? Because it's about you. It's about you. You are making an investment. Always think about what made you walk through those doors. What made you, what is, what is your goal? Why are you here? Why are you doing this? Is, if it's your personal life change or whatever, great. If you're doing it for your kids, great. If you're doing it to you know, prove to somebody that you know you can do it, great. Whatever your, your why is, remember that why. Put it on your wall where you see it in the first thing you see in the morning and last thing you see at night. Because that's what's going to get you through. Because I'm, I'm telling you, there are going to be challenges. Whether it is from your coursework or if it's from your life outside of school. And folks, if you have people in your life outside of school, who are telling you that you can't do this or you are not worthy of it or whatnot, <laughs> come and talk to me. Come and talk to me. I will share my personal experiences with you to let you know that if I can make it, you can make it. No joke. And I will also advise you to take that, that negative energy, don't let it get into your head, but let it be the fuel that fires you up to succeed. Because once you succeed, those negative people, they will be hurting more than you can even slap them with a, a, a two by four. They don't want you to succeed. That's why they're telling you all those negative things. They can see potential in you that they don't have. That's why they're telling you that. You may not see it in you, but they can. And they want to kill that potential. Come on, don't let them, don't let them. Let that be the fire that drives you to be successful. And I'm telling you that because that's my experience. And I'm here and I'm succeeding. Wasn't easy, nobody handed me anything, I worked for it. I busted my behind. When you see my behind, you realize that I don't have a lot of it. I worked hard on that stuff. And I'm telling each of you that you can do it too. You can. It is not too late to get your head in the game. You get the right mindset. You get the right attitude. Lean on your resources. Who are your resources? Director of admissions, your uh, admission representative, your program director, Jess, your program instructor, Lisa, campus president, director of education. We are all here for your success. And let me make something clear. People say that, you know, great colleges turn out great students. That is the most ridiculous statement ever. What makes a great college? Can anybody tell me? Anybody? Great staff. I tell you what makes a great college. Vicky, you want to tell me what makes a great college? Great staff. Great staff, okay, yes. What else? The, the students. Oh, shizzle, there it is. The students, successful students make a great college. Right? We want you to be successful. We are here to help you be successful, attain that life goal, the life dream, the mission that you have, your personal mission, to be able to get there and say, I made it. It is only when you are successful that we become successful, right? We as in the college. Because people are going to ask, where did you go to college? Where did you get your education from? Because they can see what you are doing and how you're doing what you're doing. And they are amazed. That is when the college, that matter if it's Brookline, that matter if it's wherever else, that is when the college begins to be successful. It is the students. And yes, it is the staff, because it is the staff, the instructors and the program directors who help the students be successful. So when I say lean on your resources, 
those are the resources I'm talking about. How many of you on this call are going to stick with this program? Oh, I'm asking a question. I want some answers. <laughs> I am. I am. Me. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to stick with it because it means something to you, right? Yes. We're yep. here to help you achieve whatever that means to you. That is what we're here for. So my, my, my role here is to partner with Yes and make sure that we have all these clinical sites ready for you so that you can go and have the rotations wherever you want to specialize. You know what, there was even a, one of the um, screens that I didn't um, put on here, but to show you the various places where surgical techs work. Most importantly, they just work in a hospital. It's not just a hospital, it's not just a hospital, like just a clinic. There are so many areas, and it's on the um, Bureau of Limited Statistics website. Go look it up. You will be amazed you realize that there is truly opportunity if only you will go get it reach for it jump for it grab onto it say it's mine make it yours and take it where you want to take it because folks it really is about you i've said that how many times now it really is about you look briefly i was told to my face that i wouldn't amount to anything anything and i'm not talking about africa where i was born i'm talking about here in the united states of america it was said to me more than once to my face and in one instance there were other people around it was not good but you know what in each of those situations i always heard my mom's voice thank god for great mothers and my mother always told us my siblings and I, that you are just as good, if not better, than anyone else out there. And just keep your mouth shut, keep your head down, and just go get it. And Lord knows that words that come out of mother's mouth, good mother's mouth, are so true, so real. And when I put my head down and I kept my mouth shut and I went for it, come on, I hurt some people. I heard them bad because what they thought didn't happen. Didn't happen. I turned out better than they thought. And I'm telling you that you can turn out better than anybody out there. Anybody out there. You just got to put your mind to it. You just got to want it. You just got to have that fire burning inside of you. And you do everything every day, every single day to get that. Because once you do it, well, how do you how do, how does something become a habit? You do it for 30 days nonstop. It becomes a habit. So like director of admissions was saying, start now. Start that early wake up because some of your classes are gonna be at six o'clock in the morning. If you don't know, I'm telling you right now. If you're not a morning person, get into it. Do whatever it takes to become a morning person. Because some of your classes are gonna be early in the morning well before the sun comes up. What are the saying about waking up early go? The early bird catches the worm, right? So you gotta be early to get an opportunity because when you get into your career, those surgeries are gonna be early in the morning and you gotta be ready for it. You gotta be there. Folks, I can go on and on and on with you guys till tomorrow. Education changed my life. So for you guys wanting to do better and improve yourselves, look, I'm sold. You don't have to, you know, tell me how much you want it or whatnot. I'm already sold on the on the basis that you are you are pursuing um, surgical tech. I'm sold. I am sold. And I'm gonna be there lockstep with you. Just show me that you want it. And I will go all lengths. To make sure that it happens for you. Are you are you hearing me, guys? 
Yes, thank you. Yeah. Loud and clear. Mm -hmm. And some of you have kids, right? Yes. Yes. Some of you have kids. Your kids, um, they're going to say and do exactly what they see mom doing. Mm -hmm. You are their role model. So if you don't succeed, trust me, they're not going to succeed. And that is so true. That is so true. You got to beat the odds. You got to beat the odds. And you beat the odds every single day by waking up and going to that grind. Going to that grind. Because that's how you get successful. I'm going to hop off my soapbox. What questions do you all have for me? <laughs> Does anybody have any questions for Mr. Carl or myself? It can be about sex tech. It can be about anything. Ask. No questions for me. Thank you, Jenea. Good. Well, you've certainly covered a lot today, Carl, and I really appreciate you taking the time. Um, and I appreciate everybody here taking the time um, to let us uh, give you that warm welcome to our family. Um, you'll hear that a lot when you talk to us. We don't look at this like it's a school. It's just, I mean, we do obviously to some extent, <laughs> but um, we, together the people, it's, it, it's about the people, right? We are a family. You're a part of the family now. Um, and we really just want you to have that, that comfort of coming to us, asking us questions. Headset's falling off here. Um, coming to Carl when you have questions, coming to your program director while you're in the, in the school, um, talking with Jessica, allowing her to help in whatever way. I see uh, Margarita has a question. Yes, ask away. Are we gonna see the schedules or get information on their schedules for classes? The, the schedules you'll get um, during orientation week. So it's usually that Wednesday or Thursday that the schedules get released prior to, you know, the start date of 921. So it's that week prior, around Wednesday or Thursday of that week, you'll get the schedule. Mm -hmm. Good question though. Okay. Very you. good question. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Okay, we are just shy of uh, a full hour here. So again, thank you for taking, I see, I, I can see some of you are at work uh, as you're, as you're attending today. So truly appreciate that you took the time out of your day um, to allow us to welcome you. Um, you. You all have admissions reps, their responsibility is to take care of you, make sure you have all questions answered. So if you have any pending questions beyond today's um, session here, uh, make sure you reach out to them. Uh, all of you received an email from me, unfortunately, because I sent so many emails out to our students. I think I'm starting to go into the spam folder, so I might be in your spam folder by now, but um, you, my direct contact information is in there, so you can certainly contact me also if you have any questions. Um, and then, of course, Carl, your rep or myself can direct you over towards Carl um, if you have any questions, even for him. We're all here. It's one family. We're all here to support whatever we can do. Okay. Great. All thank right. you, Corey, and thank yeah. you, Carl. Thank you. You're most welcome. Hey, folks, I'm here to help you. We can start working on your resume right now. If you need help with it, you may look at it or whatnot. That's my, my email right there. Just shoot it to me, and um, let's make some time to review it and get you ready, okay? Okay. Thank you he, so much. Yeah, he You're put most the... welcome. Thank you. He, he put the email into the chat for those who didn't click on the button or whatever, if it's blinking, but it's carl.wolf at brooklinecollege.edu. He has EU, but it's EDU. Carl Wolf. That's oh not, yeah. <laughs> that's all right. Not W O L F. Not like the big bad wolf. It's W U L F F Wolf at BrooklineCollege.edu. All right, guys. And again, if you need that information too beyond this uh, event, just get just get with Carl, or I mean, uh, your emissions rep, and we can get Carl's information to you. Okay. I don't want to take any more of your time. I appreciate all of you. Look forward and so excited to seeing you at orientation and then starting that journey with us uh, on September 21st. Have a great holiday weekend. Hopefully you get some time to yourself to enjoy and relax. And then come, come September 21st, we're going to hit the ground running and we're, we're going to make all search techs. All right? Outstanding. All right. Have a great day, everyone. Take care. Have a good day. Bye.